This is my all new 10 foot by 16 foot garden shed. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly how I build it. Now, if you wanna build one of these yourselves or you wanna see the materials list and the cost breakdown analysis, you can go to diybuilds.ca and download that for free. Now let's get started on the first step of building this shed, which is hiring my concrete guys to pour this pad that this shed is going to be built on. Let's start things off with a quick time lapse of my concrete guys pouring the shed pad, which is a 10 by 16 pad and it has a rat wall foundation. All in all, it cost about two grand for them to pour this pad for me. Just as it was starting to cure, I went around and inserted the bolts, which are going to hold our shed down to the slab. We have four on the long side, front and back and then three on the short side. Obviously I left room for the door in the middle there, that's very important. In the corner here you see we have a little bit of a conduit in the, that's gonna be for future electrical. It's totally optional. I don't ever have to add it, but it's there as an option. Now we're gonna be starting with the 16 foot footer plate. We're gonna mark out the location of these four bolts on the back, and then we're going to drill those holes as we are gonna be starting with building this back wall first. So I've got my mark here. You see, I just measured from the edge to the center of this bolt, which is about two and a quarter inches. But I do want to put this wall about a quarter inch into the cement because I want my plywood to rest on this edge. And then I can just visually mark the center this way onto the next one. So it looks good. There's about a quarter inch reveal around the outside, exactly what we wanted. Now you want to do this dry run right here before you go ahead and build the wall because it will be a lot harder when you have 16 foot of wall you're trying to get on these four individual pins. So we are going to be studying this wall with 92 and a half inch studs. Now that means that the wall plus the top and footer will be around eight feet. And that's perfect. That means I don't have to cut any of these studs. Now I have laid out my 16 inch on center. That's what we're going with for this project. Now I've marked them all out on the bottom plate. Now I'll just copy and paste them onto the top plate. Then we'll start screwing the wall together. So now that we've got all our studs laid in place and we have our super special helpers here, we can go ahead and drive in two screws to the bottom plate and the top plate to attach each stud. Again, we are building this on the floor and then standing it up. We're going to do the same construction method for all four of the walls. And just make sure when you're driving in these screws that you do flush up the outside here. The inside doesn't really matter as we will put sheathing on this. We don't really want any humps and bumps. So take two, go like this. Take two, go like this, okay? I'm going super fast. You are super fast. Oh no. So just before we stand up our wall, there's one last thing we need to do, and that's to attach this sill gasket to the bottom. Now that's gonna decouple the wall from the concrete. Should the concrete ever get wet, we don't want moisture wicking up into our wall. Traditionally, or if you want to, you could use a pressure treated footer plate, but in this case, we're just gonna use the sill gasket. Set, go. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm up. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Shouldn't be able to fall. Okay, so same thing on this front wall, except in the middle here, we've left out two studs, and these studs are a little bit to the side to make room for our 38 inch opening for our 36 inch wide door. So we'll just get this screwed together and stand it up, same as the back. Woo! Yeah, so I forgot to drill the holes for the uh, bolts in the bottom. I did mark them out. I don't know why I didn't drill them out, but anyways, yeah, we're gonna drill them up now and uh, no dry run, but hopefully it works. Okay, and then... Somewhere around there. Thanks, Bill. These two are in. This one's in. Okay. Woo! So now with the front and back set up, we need to make this wall in between. Now I'm not going to measure and risk having anything be off, so I'm just going to place the board down at the bottom, mark it, cut it to length, same as the top piece. Now when we mark out our 16 inch on center, we are going to start from the outside, not this inside, as we want the plywood to start on the outside as well. Mark it. 
I'm going to go ahead and tighten down all these bottom plates, making sure the corners are nice, aligned, and tight. So before we add the sheathing and make this a solid, rigid structure, I'm going to go ahead and add three inch screws from this side of the wall into this side, totally locking this corner together. Actually, the last thing we do before sheathing is putting on a double header plate. This helps support the roof as well as totally lock these corners together. As you see, they overlap like this, so that'll make sure that nothing falls apart in the corners. Okay, we're ready to put up the sheathing. This is half inch plywood. You can go with OSB or something like that. I really like the plywood, even though it is more expensive because it is that much more stronger. It's also a little bit waterproof to some degree. Now, what I have done is marked out where the studs are on the top and the bottom of the cement. That way I can easily hit every stud. I'm using inch and five eighths construction screws. I think they're number six. So we'll just put this up on that little ledge I left at the bottom that'll keep it in place. And then this is perfectly square. So we're gonna use this as our guide to kind of shift around the frame and make the shed totally square. Now, this is the secret weapon right here. This is a drywall gun. This is gonna ensure that we can sink every screw to the proper depth and not have to think about over screwing any of the fasteners. Okay, so you see we have this bottom plate here from this long wall. Obviously, we're missing the middle studs for the door. It's time to cut this away, and I'm going to reuse it up top for the little header piece or the cripple. So I've got that side cut out just using a sawzall. I'm going to do the same thing here, and then we're going to reinstall it there to the rough opening, which is 82 inches. Then we can cut out this plywood section right here, and then we can add our last bit of sheathing over there. I've left that open for now because otherwise I'd be kind of locked out, and this would be a lot harder to cut out. Here's Johnny. David Letterman. Here's Conan. Jay Leno. Well, so long as we're cutting holes and stuff, we might as well do the windows on either side of the door. I've got these little braces for the bottom and the top. Then we'll drill some holes and just saws all it out again. I'll go in just like this. So here we are inside my shop and you can see we're in front of the miter saw here. Now this is going to be your friend when it comes time to cut the rafters, which is what we're about to do. Now you see I don't have a proper miter saw station with proper stop blocks or anything like that. So we're kind of making do. We're going to make our first cut at our 33 and a half degree angle on this side. I've got a little support block over here so the board doesn't tip when we cut it. And then over here, I've kind of extended the fence out and I have a permanent stop block screwed down to it over there. That way we can make our first cut, move the board over there, make our second cut. There's no measuring involved. This has already been pre-laid out. I know the measurements, so we can just batch through all 30 of these. That being said, if you guys want to build this or any of my other projects, feel free to go to DIYbuilds.ca as I offer free plans for all my projects there. So now that we have cut to length with the appropriate angles on all 30 of our rafters, we're going to be marking and cutting out this bird's mouth on 26 of them. The four on the outside won't have this bird's mouth because there's nothing for them to rest on. Now we do this so it registers against the top plate and the wall and makes installation very easy as well as providing a good nailing edge to secure from the bottom. Now what I'm going to be doing is using this, my T or template piece, and just resting it on top, tracing it, bringing it to the bandsaw and cutting that out. You can also use a jigsaw if you don't have a bandsaw. I wouldn't recommend using a circular saw as the overcut could weaken this joint. So your best bet is jigsaw, bandsaw, or handsaw. Just make sure everything's aligned and trace it out. Now we'll go cut that out. So 
So because our shed is 16 feet long and boards only come at a max of 16 feet, we need to join two 10 footers for our ridge, which is also going to be a two by six instead of a two by four. Now to join this, I'm going to be using a two by four set at the distance between the rafters, which is 14 and a half inches because 16 inch on centers. And we'll just brace this side, connecting the two together, flip it over, do the same thing. And the reason we're not using a full two by six is because the angle of the roof would interfere and we'd have to cut it away anyways. So I've gone ahead and set up the rafters temporarily outside from the edges to where the peak is going to be. I used a little block of wood, the exact thickness, the 5.5 inches of that two by six beam that's going to run down the middle. And I got my measurement to the bottom, which thankfully actually matched my plans. You always want to take real world dimensions and not 100% trust the plans. So we've got these two pieces that are going to support that two by six beam. And now I'm just going to simply attach some L brackets to the bottom. This will temporarily hold everything in place while we get that two by six set on top. And then we can start attaching our rafters to the two by six beam. All right, let's go set these in the top plate of the shed directly in the center. So before we start placing the rafters, I do have two temporary braces going across the middle. That's just so the weight of the roof doesn't push out the sides. These will be reconfigured later. Now again, these are cut to the same length as our short walls. So everything is nice and parallel down the middle. Okay, so we've marked the underside. So we have 16 inch overhanging over here, 32 over there. So eventually we'll have to cut off a bit over there. That's because of the offset of our joint landing in between the joists in the middle. So we're just gonna raise this up, line it up with our marks and screw it in. Yeah. So it's finally time to install the rafters. We're gonna be installing a toenail screw in the bottom here, leaving the top loose on both sides. That way we can center the board. You're gonna see as soon as we put this first one up, it's way off, but when we get both sides in place and equalize them, we can then toenail the top and that'll keep everything locked together. Then we're gonna be doing the middle rafter to add a little bit of strength to the beam here and then the backside, and then we'll just fill in the rest doing that 16 inch on center. So now that we've installed the rafters and finished putting these cross braces between them, that'll stop any kind of snow load from spreading out the walls, keeping everything nice and tight. Now I wanna go ahead and install a toenail up through the top plate into the bottom of these cross braces. That'll just lock everything really tightly together. So in order to put the sheathing on the triangular sections at the end, we took a whole sheet, brought it up there, which was not very easy to do, and we traced it from the inside. Now we're just going to zip that piece off. We'll do the same thing for the other side with that same piece of plywood. So this is just one piece of plywood used for that whole triangular section. And then we'll do the other side. And then we're done with the sheathing on the body of the shed. Okay, the next thing to go up on the roof is our front fascia boards. They're gonna be the two by fours. We'll screw on with three inch screws. Again, 16 inch overhang on both sides. We'll have to cut that side to length when we get there because of the 10 foot, 10 foot sections. Now we just come back and add one more screw, then onto the other side. So I've marked 16 inches and using my speed square and circular saw, we're just going to cut these to length. So now we'll attach the outer rafter to this piece we just cut off. So next we're going to add our bracing, one here and one here. I'm going to measure them at 30 inches, 60 inches. We'll just drive in two screws from the outside, two screws from the inside. 
That'll make this exterior part a lot more rigid. So last thing to do before putting up our shingles is putting up our roof sheathing, which again is half inch four by eight sheets of plywood that we're gonna secure down with our inch and five eighths screws. Again, using our drywall gun, so making sure that all the screws are nice and flush. So the sheathing's done, you see I had to run vertical with it, and that's because the shed is ever so slightly out of square, and this was the easiest way to mitigate that. Now with this overhang at the bottom, I'm just going to take my resip and cut that off, and we can start throwing down some shingles. Okay, it's time to shingle. We're going to be starting with our starter strip here, and then using regular shingles after that. You guys don't need me to explain to you how to shingle a roof. There's 8 million videos telling you how to do that. If you want, install a steel roof, but we're going with shingles. So uh, yeah, enjoy this time lapse. So with the roof done, I want to get these windows mounted. Now these are just single pane cheapos from the Home Depot. Obviously we don't need double pane or anything like that since this is not an insulated or climate controlled shed. These will work just fine for us. So let's head inside and I'll show you how we attach them. Okay, we have our window now. I've gone ahead and drilled a hole in each one of the corners here. It's four screws, that's all we need to mount this. And we're just gonna add a little bit of shims behind the vinyl and the stud here. I know this is my most straight up and down stud from using my level earlier. So we're just going to drive inch and a quarter screw here and here through some shims, same on this side, and that's it. Then with a knife, we'll just score and snap off the shims. Perfect. So for the door, we're going to go ahead and use a pre-hung steel door. This is what you usually on the front of your house or something like that. Now this is a 36 inch wide, as I feel like that's a you know, pretty much the max you can get without going into the double door territory. And that should be wide enough for everything we want. If you have like a lawn tractor or something, which I never will, you'll want to put in a double door or a garage door or something like that. But yeah, we'll just put this in place. We'll get three screws on the hinge side and then we'll shim this side. Hopefully the hinge side doesn't need shimming, but if it does, just shim it and screw it in place. Okay, so just looking at the gaps along the top, it looks like we need about a three eighths of an inch shim at the bottom and flush at the top. So we'll start by just screwing the top in place and then adding some shims as we go. In this instance, my shim was a piece of half inch plywood. Do whatever you need to to make it work. Okay, it's finally time to put up some vinyl siding. We're going to start by putting up the corners, and to do that, we're going to have to make an angled cut to match the top slope of the roof, and then we'll cut it to length at 90 degrees at the bottom when we get our measurements. So the best tool to make these cuts with is going to be our compound miter saw, as it's going to give us the cleanest cut. Now, one trick to do is to put a saw blade on backwards. Yes, this does work, and it will reduce the amount of catches we'll have. Now, as always, when you're cutting this kind of material, you want to go really slow into the cut. Now that our corner vinyl pieces are cut, we can go ahead and mount to the shed. And to do that, we're gonna be using inch and a quarter roofing nails. You'll install them in between the slots so there's room for this to move up and down to expand with the sun and all that. Now, what you wanna do is install only for these corner pieces, a tight screw on the top 
because you don't want this to go up and down. You want this to always stay against the roof. Everything else can kind of expand down. So all those screws you want snug, but not tight. You want this to be able to move as it heats up in the sun and expands. It'll actually expand quite a bit. So you do want that movement. So we just push this into the corner, make sure our top is flush. Nothing's bent. We're not forcing anything like this out of square, just nice and snug into the corner. And we'll install our bunch of nails about every foot all the way down. Hi, Vale. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. So now it's time to install the J-channel around the windows. So first step is we're going to take our piece of J-channel. We're going to overhang about an inch on either side, and then we're going to cut to length. Cutting J-channel is as simple as using a pair of tin snips. Now that you've dropped your J-channel, it's time to put the miters in the corner. Now we're going to start this by putting a snip on the bottom of both sides, creating a tab we can fold over. That's going to be our rain drip tab. So I'll put our J channel up here in the center and we'll bend over our tabs. Now to cut the miters, it's as simple as just cutting off this corner and this corner. Now for the side pieces, all we need to do is create a relief cut right here for that tab to fit into. So we'll just notch out the bottom. So now we'll just slide this notch into our rain tab here and then up into the miter. Now we'll just nail this all down and do this for the rest of the windows and doors and we're done with the J channel. So to finish off the bottom, we have this piece right here, which just has our 45s and a flat cut on the back. And that's because the bottom rain tab is gonna fold behind on the bottom piece here, and then we'll overlap our miters. Ta-da. Last step before getting our vinyl up is putting our starter strip between our edge and our J channel all around the shed. Now we'll just simply cut this with our tin snips again and then nail it in place. Now it's crucial that you get this completely level, whatever you're referencing off of. If you're actually using a level, if you're using the bottom edge, whatever you wanna do, make sure that this is straight and carries across the whole shed because as you wrap around the corners, you don't want your vinyl getting out of sync with each other. You want them at the same level. So what I'm going to be doing is starting my starter strip about an inch below this plywood edge. That'll keep it consistent around the shed. And I'm just simply going to be looking at the plywood on this bottom rail here and then putting a nail in the top. That way everything stays even. With the starter strips done, we can now start placing our vinyl siding. Obviously we start from the bottom working our way up. Now in order to cut this to length, we are going to be using the miter saw. I'm going to be sliding this into the far corner all the way to the end, no gap. And then over here, we're gonna leave about a half inch of gap. That'll leave us with a quarter inch once we center it on either side for expansion and contraction. Again, when we put these nails in place about every foot or so, we don't want to snug them up. This has to be able to move ever so slightly. Let's head over to the saw, cut up all these pieces and start nailing them in place. So get this vinyl into place, we're gonna slide it into that side, bend it in the middle so we can fit it into that side, and then we're gonna push up into the starter strip. And just before nailing it in place, make sure you center it so you have even gap on either side. Somewhere in the middle there, and then be pushing up on it to make sure it's tight to that starter strip or the next one above it. And we'll just do that a million more times and cut around the windows and doors when we need to. Now on to painting the edge of these two by fours, which is gonna act as our fascia and soffit area. I want to paint this now as our next step is going to be installing the screening underneath, which will keep all the bugs out and still allow airflow into the shed. Now, again, I'm just going to be holding this up here with staples. We'll come back and trim it to length 
And then we're going to paint the edges to really seal in those edges as well as making the edge disappear because this is not a white screen, but our trim is indeed white. So with our soffit screening installed and everything nice and painted, we can go ahead and install our J channel along the top edges here and then fill in the rest of this vinyl siding, just trimming it where needed again with a circular saw with a blade in backwards or tin snips, whatever you're comfortable with. And the very last thing to do to this shed before it's 100% complete is adding some caulking between the J channel and door and the J channel and the windows. And this sucker's done.